Hello everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we will be proving an interesting identity involving sums of the zeta functions. I know I've been doing a lot of videos about the zeta function lately, but it's an interesting function and this one's pretty cool. So let's check it out. You're going to be considering the following sum. Sum from S going from two to infinity of the quantity zeta of S minus one. Now, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I can do this. To the best of my knowledge, this formula is useless, but the proof is pretty cool, demonstrates your knowledge of the zeta function and a few other things, which we'll take a look at now. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's go ahead and write down what the zeta function actually is so we can see what we're working with. It is the sum. It's going from two to infinity of another sum, sum of one over n to the s, where n now goes from one to infinity, and we're going to subtract one. So you can see we have a sum of sums, as it were, and we'll see how we can simplify this. First thing we want to do is notice that this sum actually contains the number one, which can combine nicely with this number one. So let's write that out. Sum from n Sorry, this is a this is an S sum. S goes from two to infinity of one plus summation as n goes from two to infinity now of one over n to the s minus one. We see we have the minus ones canceling nicely. We can combine these single sums into a double sum now, since there's only one index. So this is just a sum as s and n both range from 2 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. And we want to write this as a geometric series because we know how to sum those. So we're just going to rewrite this as 1 over n to the s power. And we're going to use a familiar result for geometric series. Okay, we're going to use this result that if we start at 2 and go to infinity of the ordinary x to the n, it is just going to be x squared over 1 minus x. A simple proof of this is as follows. So the left hand side of this expression is just equal to 1 over 1 minus x, which is commonly known. And then we subtract off the terms that we don't have. So that's minus x and minus 1. So we use a common denominator of 1 minus x. 1 minus x, 1 minus x minus 1 minus x over 1 minus x. And we cancel, let's see, this is going to cancel with this. Those ones cancel. We have the minus x term here going to cancel with the plus x term here, leaving us only with the result that we want. Okay. Yeah, additional step here just for clarity. x squared over 1 minus x. There you go. Okay, now let's sum over n. We already have this in the form where we can apply the geometric series that we just derived. If we let 1 over n be the constant and s be the variable, so we'll do this now. This becomes 1 over n squared over 1 minus 1 over n. And now we just want to take the 1 over n squared downstairs to become 1 over, okay. This becomes, we multiply top and bottom by n squared. 1 over n squared minus n. Oh, sorry, that's a sum. I dropped a sum. It's very important to keep the sum. So we get rid of one sum. We still have the other one. Still have this one. One over n squared minus n, which we can rewrite as 1 over n 
n minus 1, and this should look familiar to you from basic calculus or even high school algebra. We can recognize this as a telescoping series, but for those that haven't seen it before, I'll go ahead and write it out in detail. It's, 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 it's the prototypical example of the tele telescoping series. So now this is equal to, we actually want to do partial fractions. So first let's do the partial fractions. Okay, this is equal to sum n going from two to infinity of one over n minus one, minus one over n. Why? Well, if you do partial fractions, you know that you're going to separate it into a combination of terms, one of which is one over n, and one of which is one over n minus one. So basically you just guess, and we show that it is true by checking it, by using a common denominator, n minus n minus one over n, n minus one, these n's go away. And I chose correctly here, but most of the time I don't. So half the time I choose the simpler one first. So if I had chosen one over n minus one over n minus one and subtracted them, I would have then gotten a minus sign and have to reverse it. So it's okay to guess as long as, as long as you fix it in the end. With more complicated partial fractions, you'll have factors of a half, and if you don't guess them, you'll eventually pick it up later because they'll be like a factor of two here up top. That's fine. Partial fractions now, done. Now we can just start plugging in terms basically. If you look at the n equals two term. It's going to be one over two minus one is one, which is one. One over two minus one half. Now we have the next term, which is n equals three. This is going to be one half minus one third. And n equals four term is going to be one third minus one fourth. This pattern will continue on indefinitely. And notice which terms cancel. We have the last term of the first term being canceled with the first term of the next term and the subsequent term being canceled by that term. This pattern continues forever. So the sum is just simply one. It's very surprising, I would say. We have a sum of sums here. We have a sum of the zeta functions, which are sums themselves, and we can find a closed form solution. But more surprising, it's such a simple solution. And it's also surprising since uh, values like zeta three and in general of zeta of two n plus one don't even have a closed form in the first place. At least not one that we know. So it's interesting that we can sum up all the values, the even ones which we do have, have a closed form for which are pr pr proportional to pi to some power. And the, even the odd ones, which, which we don't as well, I think it's pretty cool. Like I said, I've never found a use for this identity. It doesn't have a name. It's pretty obscure. It doesn't really appear in many math methods books either that I can tell. How, how did I discover it? Wikipedia, list of identities, and that, that's, that's it. If you like this and want to see more about the zeta function, please leave comments. I'll get to your video soon. Subscribe, please. Have a great day.